Hi, welcome to Team Pride Book Talks. My name is Lucy, and this is the program on AADL TV, where each episode I take a few minutes to talk about a young adult book that is both representative of and inclusive of folks in the LGBTQIA plus community. The book that I am going to be telling you about today is called Fire from the Sky, and this is by Moa Ake Astat, and it is translated by Eva Appelquist. This is a book about a teenage boy named Ante who lives in Sweden. He is Samye, and he is a reindeer herder, and his life is really deeply steeped in Samye tradition. And he has no doubt that he will continue to be a reindeer herder and work with reindeer for the rest of his life. He's an only child, and this is something he's gone and done with his father, and it's something that the other boys in their community do. And it's very meaningful to him, and it's part of who he is. At the same time, Ante is leading a very traditional teen life. He has friends that he goes and plays video games with. There's a lot of texting and social media and a lot of talk about relationships. One thing about those relationships is they are all heterosexual. Ante has a really good friend named Eric, but he has always been very interested in Eric as more than a friend. And he becomes sort of single-minded in his focus on Eric, partly because in his Sami culture, there is not a place for being queer. There's no one that Ante could talk to about this. There's nobody who he can look to who has paved the way before him that he knows of. And part of what Ante struggles with is as a teen who is living a teen life and having a hand in modern culture, but then having this traditional Sami culture so deeply ingrained in him, he doesn't see this place for him himself either. And he internalizes this homophobia and it makes him really get angry at himself and wonder why he is this way. He even tries dating a girl and that ends up not going well and obviously hurting her. And through those conversations with her and through conversations with a cousin of his who he's very close to, he starts to realize that he needs to maybe be more honest about who he is. And he really wants to be. He wants to be able to talk to his parents about how he feels or his grandmother, who he's very close to, about how he feels. But every time he tries to bring up any conversation, the conversation comes around to, oh, have you met a girl yet? Oh, are you dating someone? Oh, when do you think you'll get married? Very heteronormative and very quickly steered in that direction. And this just continues this internal struggle for Ante. At the same time, he's having trouble maintaining a normal friendship with Eric and a group of other boys. He's confused by Eric's behavior. Eric has a girlfriend, but when Eric is alone with Ante, he is somewhat intense with him and he sometimes touches him in a way that seems more intimate than just hand on your shoulder kind of friendship thing. And this just adds to Ante's confusion, but also to Ante's feelings about Eric. And then to hear the way that Eric talks about his girlfriend, Ante thinks maybe he doesn't really like his girlfriend. Maybe he, he really is into me. This conflicts with what Ante sees on social media and what Eric posts about his relationship there. And so this further adds to the confusion. And this book is narrated from the third person point of view, but it's really Ante's story that we're getting. We really are understanding how much anguish he's experiencing. And while all of this is going on, he has brought home this book that he just grabbed off the shelf because he was in the bookstore and Eric came in and Eric was teasing him about buying something. And so he grabbed the first book he could find and he paid for it. He brings it home, and it is a book called Racial Types in North Bosnia. It's a book by a racial biologist, and the author has an author note at the end where she explains that this book was based on the works of a real person. And essentially, the book is looking at the racial biology of humans and the belief that these researchers had that humans were made up of different races that they deemed to be worthy or unworthy. And they wanted to keep the Swedish race from being mixed with inferior races. And so the Sami people were designated as lower race. And the way that this was decided was through really this horrible research on these people and treating them like specimens and like animals. 
the same time, this is a world where growing up, Ante's grandmother went to boarding school and wasn't allowed to speak Sami there. So he's looking back at these Sami people in this book who have been categorized and photographed by this man. It turns out when he shows the book to his grandmother that two of the people in the book, because he recognizes the place, he recognizes the scenery, two of the people in his book are his great-grandparents. When Ante is looking through this book, it becomes a search for ancestors and people that he's related to who are like him. He just wants to know that there has been someone who came before him who was also gay. He does these searches online. Are there such things as homosexual reindeer herders? And he can't find conclusive evidence. There are forums where people who weigh in are not even Samye. And of course, like anything online, the information is conflicting and it's hard to know if it's even real. There is a neighbor of Ante's and his parents named Blas who moved to Stockholm about 10 years ago. And he moved kind of suddenly and the community believed that he was marrying a woman who was not Samye. And that's why he had to go. And at the same time, this other man from their community named Ruben, who seemed to be really struggling, also moved. That felt like a relief to the community. But they very much miss Las. Ante was very close to him, used to talk to him on birthdays and things like that, but hasn't heard from him in a long time. Las comes back for a wedding that is happening in their village. And he tells Ante about his life and the fact that he has been married to Ruben for 10 years. And that's why he moved to Stockholm. And this just provides a small glimmer of light for Ante to start to realize that it is possible. He still doesn't necessarily know how he's going to get to where he needs to go, but to know that he is not the only person who feels this way, this only Samye person who feels this way, is a huge help to him. It also helps to talk to someone who counsels him about how to better live his truth and be himself than Loss felt he was. And also the fact that Ante can be these two things. He can be a reindeer herder and he can be Samye and he can be gay. And just because that hasn't happened doesn't mean it can't. Just because Ante hasn't seen that happen doesn't mean that it can't happen. And that's not to say that it's smooth sailing for Ante or that it's easy and he still has a relationship with Eric to figure out and to contend with. He angers Eric and some other friends at some point when he makes up a rumor about something that happened with a girl. There is this storyline of social activity and high school angst and text back and forth, a lot of which is built around Ante's struggle and Ante's difficulty trying to figure out who he is. And also this community that is so steeped in culture that it would be hard for them to imagine in a different way. So this book does a great job of balancing these two things and showing you how difficult it is for this person to be wanting to stay so true to the world he grew up in and being part of that culture, but then also feeling the way he feels and wanting to be true to that too. Though Ante comes from a very specific place, there is a universality to that story and that universality can be applied to the teenage experience and to the experience of finding yourself and to the experience of coming out and figuring out a safe way to do so, if it is safe at all. And eventually, Ante realizes that honesty is the best way to go forward with his friends. He also starts to realize that he has to look closely at the history and the things that, for instance, he's seeing in this book, the fact that there were so many people who came before him who were robbed of their language and who were taken from their families and who were put in boarding school and who were basically held up as specimens, examined as specimens, that all of that pain and trauma is in him somewhere. That even though it happened a hundred years ago, it isn't over. And he realizes that some of the difficulty that he has in feeling like he doesn't act how a Sami should act or look like a Sami should look is that some of that was taken from the people that he comes from. And he starts to realize that where he lives, this is his home, and this is his culture, and this is his home, and this is his culture. So why should he have to change who he is to live there, and why should he have to adapt? It's also a love story, a really a story of 
first love, teenage first love. So it does have those heartwarming parts to it. And it takes place in a part of the world so far north that, you know, they experience the northern lights with regularity. And there are parts of the year where it's daylight all the time. And so there's sort of a magical element to the writing almost and to the feeling behind that that enhances the the love story. There's a lot of language in the book that is Sanmi, there are a lot of words for food, for clothes, for family members. There are sentences that are completely in Sanmi and they are not translated. I appreciate when an author chooses to do that because then it becomes part of the job of the reader to do the work and to learn more about what those words mean, but also to learn more about Sanmi while you're doing that. It also is indicative of the fact that not every part of every book has to be written. For every person. And this book is such a good example of a book that has a universality, but then also has some parts that are unique to Ante and his story and his heritage and his family ties. And the author is herself, in fact, a reindeer owner. And she was 23 when this book was written. It's really well written, and I look forward to reading what else she writes. I recommend that you read Fire from the Sky by Moa Bake Asto. There are not a lot of books out there about queer Sami teenagers, and we are lucky to have this one. Thank you for joining me.